Planned obsolescence has been a problem in consumer electronics for a long time, and it's been a bane of recording engineers as well. But now, as technology comes into the guitar world, we might have to deal with it too. We're gonna to talk about it. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, Subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. This is kind of a podcasty conversation, actually. We're casting. Uh, yeah, we're casting on the YouTubes. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about technology in the guitar world and the issue of planned obsolescence. Do you know what planned obsolescence is, Cooper? Yeah. You want to enlighten us? <laughs> yeah, it's when you like you know something's going to be trash pretty soon, but it's whatever. Yeah, you know? something's going to be trash. And it's kind of designed to be replaced. Um, and, you know, it's there's two I've different... I've seen one of these, too. Yeah, you ever seen a phone? <laughs> um, yeah. Here's the problem. There are things that over time become obsolete. That's just the nature of progress. And then there are other things where manufacturers knowingly plan from a marketing and sales standpoint to roll out new iterations of things, um, whether the old thing is still viable or not as a means of refreshing their marketing and getting dollars. Here's the fact of the matter, and we can paint this in the light of manufacturers are bad and evil and musicians are good. Another way of looking at this would be musicians are kind of stupid with short attention spans and require fresh stuff from manufacturers to be excited and buy new gear. Would that be another way? That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I've heard that one. I mean, we're musicians, we're talking about ourselves here. But, um, you know, what if a guitar company just said, hey, we're going to make the very best guitar we can, and this is the model, and this is all we're ever going to have for the next 20 years? They would go out of business, right? Yeah. Because people just stop buying it. Like, oh, yeah, they've made that forever. Yeah, I think it takes a lot of time to as a manufacturer probably to hammer down one of those models yeah. that you know will always be popular, 0028, D28, mm -hmm. something like that. Even then, Martin still has to I was gonna say. It, you know. Yeah. They, they there's had, a reason they, they did an SC13. Well, there's a reason they did the reimagined standard series. Exactly. Because yeah. their standard series had been so standard for so long that people were just like, yeah, I can just go buy a used one. You yeah. know, so this is a real problem, and we also want companies to innovate. Nobody's saying not to do that. Sometimes the new model is not so, you know, world changing compared to the old model. You know, I think we can agree that sometimes the newest version of some strat is a lot like the previous version of some strat yeah. and hasn't changed so much. It's a small little iteration that's been changed. And so you don't need to go out and sell your old guitar to buy a new guitar because the old guitar doesn't work. Not necessarily the case when it comes to technology, however, for a number of reasons. And I think one of the biggest ones is the reliance upon software and computer interfaces. And as that industry is continually evolving and changing, it bleeds into problems in the kind of ancillary industries that mm -hmm. interface with this stuff. So I mentioned at the very start that this has been a problem for recording engineers for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you you and I know guys who have like really old equipment, which mm -hmm. still works, which is really still very cool. But in this day and age, if they want to utilize that older equipment with their new software and the new way that they edit things, uh, it can be problematic at times. Yeah, for sure. It's the same thing I think about with like the synthesizer world. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of synths that our boss buys and puts right outside this door and a lot of those you cannot get parts for anymore. No. You can, you know, which is fine. Yeah. But um, it's never going to be in tune with your brand new yeah. Juno X. You know? Yeah, you're you're going to have problems with it. One of these things I get reminded in my office a lot. If I sit up there, we I have in a box a Personas Fire Studio that I think we ended up getting in stock right after they discontinued it because <laughs> Firewire went away. And what was crazy, I was talking to Josh about this before we started filming. What was crazy about this is there was a time for all of my music recording and editing uh, equipment and for my video equipment, I had FireWire 
everywhere. I had FireWire hard drives. I had FireWire 800 interfaces on my Mac computers. I had yeah. like, I still have a high-end digital mixing board with FireWire 800 out. And I can still use it, but now I have to go through two dongles <laughs> in order to connect it. I'm done with dongles. <laughs> I hate a dongle. I'm dongled out the wazoo. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, so I've got I've got FireWire 800 to Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3, which is going into now USB C USB four. Um, yeah, so that happens over time. What do we talk about with planned obsolescence though? Now that is. A little different. That is where you are actively manufacturing a product that you know has a lifespan to it. And once that reaches the end of its lifespan, the consumer is forced to buy a new one. Now, this happens with phones mm -hmm. a lot. You know, um, not just from a hardware standpoint, but from a software standpoint. Software will no longer work on a certain age of phone. The support stops for it. You can't get the apps for it. The batteries begin to degrade and so forth. So thinking about this, I started thinking about this guy. And this is not an affront to Fender, by the way. It's a concern I have because I own one of these. As do I. Yeah. Um, so this is $119.99. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically $120. Bucks, and it's a great little inexpensive interface, mm -hmm. right? You plug it into your guitar. You can connect it via Bluetooth. You can practice along with things all in your headphones so that your family's not bothered by your playing. And so I utilize it. Quite a bit. I'll mm -hmm. sit at my desk and I'll just be jamming away. And sometimes I look over and I'm getting weird looks because they can't hear how awesome I sound. Yeah. You know, but they see how goofy I look. You need that <laughs> Metal 2000 amp yeah. to show them what's really going on there. Now, the idea with this is it's a rechargeable mm -hmm. device. For the sake of convenience, you're not having to plug in a power supply while you've got this connected to your guitar and your headphones. But that means it's got a battery in it. Yep. And the battery has a shelf life. Okay, so this isn't in the front defender. Any device that you buy that has a battery has a lifespan to it. That battery is going to go through its cycles and eventually it's going to wear out and be replaced. Can I replace the battery in this? I don't know. I don't know. So this is what got me thinking about it. At some point, if I can't replace the battery in this, to no fault to other than just the design of what it is, it becomes a $120 piece of junk because it won't work anymore. Yeah. And then I have to get rid of it and buy another one, you know, and mm -hmm. therefore that becomes a problem. Now, you've got a slightly different thing in your hand that's guitar technology focused. Pocket GT, similar kind of idea behind this. It's kind of, I mean, you got the GT1, GT1000, all the multi effects processes. Legendary tones. Yeah, legendary, absolutely legendary tones. This also has a rechargeable battery yep. in it. Um, I will just say, as a side note, if the world on mass decides to stop manufacturing the little watch batteries, we're done. All right, <laughs> that's why I. That's got to be why Snark has been doing rechargeable. And well, you know, of, Apple's helping out now with their yeah. Air Tags. I had mine go dead the other day, and I'm like, I, I know because I buy them. I have a a piece, a sheet of like thick cardstock that has nothing but those batteries in it. Yeah, because I have so many devices that use yeah, them. Yeah, you're gonna need them. I, Hopefully I do. they don't make those in Russia or anything. Tubes? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of little things that we need to keep up, um, be it little batteries, tubes, software updates. Mm -hmm. If that stuff goes away, we're going back to the Stone Age with an acoustic yep. guitar and tune in at the piano. <laughs> or, or a Les Paul and a tube amp. Yeah. You know, I mean, as long as you still got power. As long as you don't have robot tuners, you're good to go on that bad <laughs> Yeah. Boy. Yeah. That was another thing. I remember one of my criticisms on those was you have to plug it in. And I, I actually dealt with one that came in for a restring once and the battery yeah. was dead. And it was like a 200 to 1 ratio on trying to manually do those. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, never again. So this crops up in a lot of places. So we're talking batteries here. And one of the things Josh and I were talking about is when you invest a lot of money into digital gear. Yeah. Um, Anything that's reliant on software, the software gets out of date. Mm -hmm. So, like, you might have a recording uh, rig with all sorts of plugins, and then your operating system gets updated, and, or the the doll that you're working with gets updated, and now the plugins don't work. Or you just, or you go the other route, which I usually ascribe to, which is that doesn't get updated as long as everything's working. But then a new plugin comes out, and you're mm -hmm. like. 
okay, well, I, I can't use this plugin unless I update. And as soon as I update, yeah. all of this other stuff breaks. And some of that is just the nature of it, and some of it's by design. Yeah. And so it's kind of a PSA. I think we need to be aware of it as it's creeping in more and more mm -hmm. into, our, uh, into our world of guitar and how it would affect stuff. If you're going to drop $2,000 on something that's like a really high-end digital modeling rig, know that that will probably still work 10 years from now, but it will be so out of date yeah. 10 years from now. Yeah, it makes me think of a few things. One, if you are out there like we constantly are, looking at social media and message boards and all this guitar community, and there's always a new startup company yeah. that has a new guitar, you pop the pickups out and you can put P90s in there, or you know, it's got chips in it that you model straight out of the guitar into your DAW. Take it with a grain of salt because that company might not be around to provide support for your new widgets. <laughs> um, and also, there are a lot of companies in the race right now, I think, trying to catch up to things like Pro Tools, yeah. catch up to things. Uh, I mean, the, it's all about the crossover of the hardware and the software in the same company which is why I think Universal Audio does it best. They did analog hardware for years and years. Yeah. Now they have the best you know, digital hardware and software and plugins. They have Luna, all this tied into one. Fender is making a huge push with Personas right now because they acquired the company yeah, last year. Yeah, if you didn't know, um, they, yeah. Yeah. that's and now under the Fender umbrella. I will say, so I mentioned that I was at the dealer event a few weeks ago and a huge chunk of the day was dedicated to Personas. And I think it's because they're trying to reinvigorate that company and introduce new product, and they have a new DAW. They yeah. have everything, and they did a full demonstration where some guys recorded live, had the song recorded, and uploaded straight to SoundCloud from the DAW immediately, and- Studio One still? Yeah. Yeah. And it's really cool, um, however, there's a lot of companies that are all trying to do the same exact thing. Um, Logic, you can upload it straight to you know iTunes straight from, it's, everybody's trying to find their niche, but the biggest thing is trying to put your investment, if you're trying to get gear, into a company that you at least know has the infrastructure to take care of you and give you product support and not completely ruin your entire flow when they decide to put an, an update out, you know? You know, we did a video years back on guitar technology fails, and I think fails. I mentioned this this in there. Uh, so this is an affront to Fender, and I mean it on purpose with all of my heart. Uh, this is not planned obsolescence. This is accidental obsolescence through uh, boneheaded engineering. Um, but they did a thing, uh, I think it was 2014, they tried to do personality cards. Uh, this was in their deluxe line. So you, you could buy a Fender Deluxe Strat that had a little plastic compartment that popped open on the back of it. And you could put these circuit boards in there um, and it would change like the entire routing of the pickups um, through these like basically these jumpers uh, and change the personality. And their idea was that you would have this little zippable wallet that you had your various personality cards in. Mm -hmm that you would you could swap out so that this guitar could be like a Swiss Army knife. And the first time our rep at the time showed it to me, I felt really bad. <laughs> Not really. I think he knew. I was like, that's the stupidest thing I have seen in a long time. So just for clarification, if you lose the card, your guitar doesn't work, right? Right. Okay, so you're going to sell cards to people who buy this guitar um, with these pickups that evidently have no personality whatsoever since they're supposed to be like a do-all for everyone. Um, and the cards are going to cost how much and you're going to put them in a wallet. And if I, like mid-set, I'm supposed to take a, the card out and swap. It was stupid. It was really, really stupid. Yeah. So thankfully, that became obsolete very quickly. But I, I think that gives some insight into the mind of some people at manufacturers because there's always this quest of how can we better monetize our customer yeah you know one of the things that i've talked i talked about a while back and it was during the pandemic we did a video on 
um, the subscription model creeping into the guitar world. Yeah. You know, BMW and other manufacturers want to charge you a monthly expense to have remote start and heated seats in your car. In which case, my response is I will never buy a car that requires me to pay a monthly fee and effectively not own the thing that I own. Um, but yeah. we, we've seen that through, not in the guitars, but kind of other things, you know? Yeah. And you can buy a digital amp that has certain patches. And I, I guarantee you, it's, it's, it's just down the pike, right? Here's software. You can subscribe and you get lessons and you get free patches monthly, you know, like the free games on the PlayStation Store. This new patch will go onto your amp and, you know, sorry, this amp is no longer being supported by this software and you have to buy this amp now yeah. in order to get the benefit. Yeah, what happens if Fender one day decides that they are done with making Acoustasonics and then you need something replaced within the circuitry of your very, I assume, technologically advanced guitar. And proprietary. Yeah. Yeah. And so it stops working on the inside. How are you going to get that taken care of? Stick with all analog. Well, it's my concern. I think the digital stuff is great, but the concern I constantly have is every time I see more technology go into a guitar made of wood and steel, you know, and what is the lifespan of that technology? And I think it's just a conversation that is worth having because I've seen, I've been in this industry specifically uh, for 10 years and I've been buying and, and playing guitar for over 20 years. And I can tell you, like, I'd have to take my shoes off to count how many different pickup systems I've seen change out throughout the years, yeah. just that alone. And that's not even that technologically like advanced compared to a lot of the software and stuff we're talking about. So anyways, it's just a conversation we're having. Um, I think it's a reality of stuff that's going on, not just in our industry, but in our world. Um, and, you know, I think cutting down on e-waste, you know, so I hope Fender has replacement batteries for these. That would be a good thing to do. Um, supporting products through. And, you know, if things get obsolete because they have to over time, that's fine. When they're planned, it's a problem. Get so, out of here. Yeah. Like to hear your thoughts on this topic. Um, you know, and maybe even hearkening back to some of those guitar technology fails from the past. Uh, Gibson's had a lot of them. And the subscription idea. I think a lot of these things are just, you know, it's technology coming into our zone. And how can we take advantage of it? And how can we not be taken advantage of? So, you hear that? That's why I get paid the big, medium-sized bucks. So anyways, let us know in the comments below your thoughts. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe, turn on notification, and like our videos, and keep coming back to see more Cooper.